Today we have to ask ourselves some pretty big questions about the future of the base, finally unlock the high voltage age, and start to address the upcoming power problem that we're about to run into here head first. Hello everyone and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. So we made a lot of progress last episode, mainly getting access to the canthal coils on the blast furnace, and also cooking up the first few ingots of stainless steel. And stainless steel is going to be very important as we move forward here. Since all the components in LV took steel, regular steel, in MV, medium voltage, they take aluminium, and as we move into high voltage, it's of course going to use stainless steel. So that means we need to produce all three of these materials consistently, which is going to be done in the blast furnace. And one of the most important things for the blast furnace is of course to give it power. We are burning diesel inside combustion generators. The problem with the diesel system though is that it's not really renewable, in that we do have to constantly fill these tanks with oil. And actually between episodes I had to move the oil pump out into a different location, near the village that we found actually at spawn. The source we previously used has now been depleted, but the same problem exists, right? We have to manually feed this thing with oil, and oil sands. What if there was a way to do it renewably? Well, fortunately for us, there actually is a way to do it, but we need to unlock high voltage for that. And if we look in the quest book here, the only thing which remains is to get some circuits. I started the preparations for this last episode, and I've been continuing to buy these diodes from the quest book, as well as these transistors. Okay, so as we know, we need to make the LVs to make the MVs to make the HVs. It's all going to be recursively crafted, which makes these very, very expensive right now. So, tin bolts, fine copper wire, integrated logic circuits, circuit boards, diodes, and we're missing something. What are we missing from this? Oh, resistors. Yeah, that's right. So, the resistors we can actually substitute with SMDs. And SMDs are just fine electron wire and carbon dust inside the assembly machine with polyethylene, which is another sink for the oil. Uh, that's kind of the reason I figured we ran out, but I, I did make at least some resistors here. And this should start to make our first LV circuits. Perfect. If we go back to the circuit page I showed a couple of episodes back, we're making these ones here. Integrated Logic, which is the second tier ones. We need 16 for the quest, but I think we might be able to get actually more than that with the materials I've collected. Let's see if we have any more polyeth- we don't have any more polyethylene. That's somewhat unfortunate. I, I think we might be short resistors here. Something that might actually help us out in the beginning here is claiming some quest rewards. Look at them all. Even in some of these other chapters like multi-block goals, especially for the canthal coils, I noticed we get an HV bag. And it gave us some blaze reed seeds. Actually, that's very useful. Let's see what else we can get here. Yeah, overall, not a bad haul from the quest book here. We got some extra canthal. We actually did get some oil here, which means we can get the polyethylene as well as C10 boosted diesel, which is the upgraded version of regular diesel. And actually C10 is what we need to launch our rocket, which is something we'll be getting to quite soon here. So we'll keep these on hand. All right, and we got the first 16 integrated logics. We do at least have enough for one more set. And as for the loot bags we just got, I'm actually gonna wait and trade them in. Or maybe we shouldn't actually, because the new power system is gonna be run at MV mostly. So maybe we just want, yeah, I'm just gonna open these things. Mistakes were made. <laughs> uh, yeah, mistakes were made. What is this? Okay, back to the circuits. We got 32 LVs, and we can use those with a bunch of other components to start making the MVs. It's pretty sad how fast these materials have depleted and how long it took me to get them, compared to just how few circuits we're going to get from this. And finally, we should be able to make up the HVs. Please tell me we got everything. Oh, but the quest is locked here. We actually need to make this transistor quest. I actually didn't notice that requirement before, but I did in preparation just in case make some hot silicon solar grade ingots and of course have to be cooled down in the chemical bath. Oh wait, we only have three, we need four. And we ended up with eight of these advanced HV circuits, which also should be a quest. There we go. And once we get a little bit more stainless through the blast furnace, we should have unlocked tier three here. HV is very exciting though, there's a lot of things we can get to do here. We've got a bunch more chemical processing to do, silicon rubber, styrene butadiene rubber, polytetrafluoroethylene, everybody's favorite favorite chemical, aka go to hell. We get to go to the moon, we get to go to Mars, we get titanium, we get a whole bunch of other advanced goodies in Ender.io. However, things are not going to be that simple. This is Gregtech New Horizons after all, and to ensure a smooth transition into HV, we need some more infrastructure. So I think it's time for another segment of Building with Threefold. You know, I quite enjoy these segments, just keep in mind that I do frequently make mistakes. A prime example being this building out here. So yeah, take everything I say with a pinch of salt. However, I have been doing some planning on the future of the base, and this spot right here is going to be the centre of it all. 
everything that we build is eventually going to lead back to this block. So yeah, this is the existing LVHV base somewhere around this pin. We want to have some sort of grand entrance, which is going to be in purple. This is going to be outward facing to this forest. I've also mentioned previously the importance of planning walkways and pathways, so all of this area in white is going to be left clear. And what we're going to work on today is the power facility, which is going to sit on the western side of the base, on the valley. A few of you guys have left comments asking what these pink blocks on the floor are for, and this is just to keep the chunk alignment going that we have. So the first one marks the chunk boundary, and then the centre of the chunk, and then again the chunk boundary every seven blocks. And this just helps us line things up if we're doing things like 10 or 20 blocks away, 50 blocks away. And since we're already leaning so heavily in the blue and orange, I thought why not go for the triangle as well, right, that we have on the channel logo. So I thought it would be pretty cool if we implemented a triangle right here at the very heart of the base, X marks the spot. So I'm thinking here in the future is where we put the AE terminals. And then the width of this triangle is going to be dug out, I don't know, like more or less the whole length of the valley. And pretty much every block above us is going to be removed. You can see kind of like the distance, how, we, how far away we are from the surface. But that's going to be way, way in the future. Right now, we have to worry about this power facility, which is going to go here. So I've got a bit of digging to do, and then I'll explain exactly what our plan of action is going to be here. But yeah, I just wanted to share this little tidbit of uh, me trying to plan out the walkways. And again, I think I might have mentioned this previously, but yeah, the, all of the walkways are either on chunk boundaries or on the middle of the chunk, which lines up to these pink blocks. It just makes it easier in the future when, you, uh, when you're when you trying to line up different rooms. So we're going to go all the way to, I think it's this chunk here that we're supposed to be in. Yeah, it's off to our right. I'll figure it out. Let me do some digging here and plan out this space. And then we've got a whole lot of crafting to do because this is going to take quite a lot of machines. So yeah, after doing some digging and estimating how much space we would need, I did go and move the miner, which was previously on a tetrahedrite vein. I moved it just before the episode started, and it's now been moved to another magnetite vein. Aha, uh -huh, I see you down there. And he despawned. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Did he actually just despawn, or... I think he did, right? He's not just invisible. Okay, back to digging. Back to digging. Alright, so a couple hours later, I've been doing some digging, and I think it's just a matter of us actually building this thing. I did also do something I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is move the smeltery. I moved it downstairs here, using the elevator we got from a quest reward. And one of the things we're going to need here coming up is a lot of ender pearls, which we can actually get from the smeltery. So I've been buying a bunch of enderman spawn eggs from the quest book. Unfortunately, we're out of coins though. It takes the survivor coins. We don't have any more of these. And as you know, some of the mobs can spawn infernal. And one of the traits for the enderman is actually a regeneration trait. Which means you can basically infinitely keep Enderman inside the smeltery if you get if you roll the dice correctly. Okay, so the first and second didn't give us it. Let's see if we get lucky. I somehow doubt it. I think that's the icy. I mean, hey, they're still all going to melt into liquid Ender, which we can pour out. We can probably do more than one at once. Is that him? I don't want to look at him in case he teleports away. Is that him? I think it is, right? Oh no, that's the cursed Enderman. Never mind. <laughs> I thought he was red. But I did craft these soul vials just in case he gets away. But I think Endermen can only teleport to places they can actually see. So they shouldn't be able to teleport out of this place. Next one is blinding. Next one is normal. Next one's mirage. Another cursed. This is extremely cursed. Another normal. Another icy. <laughs> Another normal. Okay, we didn't get it. Anyway, so what exactly are we trying to do here? Well, we're going to make benzene. Benzene we can burn inside gas turbines for 360,000 EU per cell, and this will basically take us all the way up to LUV. Yeah, the hope is to get all the way up to tier 6 with this power setup, and it's going to look something like this. Now first of all, I want to give credit where credit is due, this was designed by the Shadow of X. You guys might have seen him in the comments section, he leaves massive essays. <laughs> and he also uh, developed most of the spreadsheet that's linked in every video. Well, he also designed this system here, which will, which will give us benzene. And also a bunch of other byproducts as well, including nitrogen and oxygen, which we'll get to. But yeah, this is using a schematic. The schematics mod is included in GTNH by default, and you can download all of these via the Discord link in the description. All you have to do is put those files inside this folder, import the schematic, and it's going to give you this. And then we can move it around. And it also gives us a material list here. So this is basically everything we have to craft today. For our specific situation, we don't actually need this multi-block you can see in front of us. This is for pollution prevention, but we of course have pollution disabled in the configs. There is three different schematics here for when we eventually unlock different machinery, which will make this system better. 
and they are designed to be built on top of each other once we get access to more machines. Actually, maybe we can show what the tier 3 looks like. Yeah, as you can see here, it's a lot of machinery to craft and build. It should also be self-sufficient. The only thing we have to supply this with is wood, which are going to be input up here. So yeah, there's a few things which I'm not entirely sure how we're going to handle, but I think that's going to be part of the fun. And there is also pros and cons to switching to benzene. Petrochemistry or diesel processing is something that we'll have to do eventually, since we need specific byproducts. But the benzene should work out a bit cheaper for us in the long run, and is a bit easier to scale. It's more simple than diesel. Alright, so obviously we have a lot of crafting to do for this, and truthfully, I've been kind of putting it off a little bit. Hello, creeper. <laughs> oh, what a shot that was. <laughs> However, I do also want to mention that I've been uh, mindfully kind of slowing the pace of the episodes down a little bit. I'm not entirely sure how that's working out. I can certainly make them faster and cut out m even more than what I already do. I think perhaps the last episode was a little bit much uh, in terms of the crafting. A lot of you guys probably... Wait a second, is this basalt? I'm going to mark this. We actually could do with a lot of basalt to build the base with. Yeah, last episode was probably quite a lot to, uh, to try and follow along with, especially if you don't play Greg Tech. And I definitely don't blame you guys. So I'm going to try to vary up a little bit, especially when there's large segments of crafting. Often I find when you're watching things and you're not super familiar with how they work, it's just like, okay, now we craft this and then we craft this. <laughs> I try to stay away from that. But you know, a large part of the game is actually crafting and it's definitely exciting whenever you access some new stuff. I don't know why I'm here picking up bricks. I'm just basically waiting on the oil pump. There's no, there's no specific reason. I just remembered we were actually, we didn't take these yet from the village. Frequent journeys for oil is something that we should be able to avoid once we get benzene established. But we do need a, a little temporary boost in diesel, and that is going to be to run the blast furnace. We need some new materials out of this thing. We have also, by the way, been cooking up some more stainless steel. We should be able to unlock HV now. There is the quest. Awesome. Oh yeah, now we've unlocked tier 3. And I've also been making steel in the blast furnace. That's something else that we can do. And I think it's only 6, 5 seconds per steel ingot. That's exceptionally good. And we're going to need a lot of steel. And one of the reasons for that is electrical steel. Steel dust, raw silicon dust, and coal dust will make up six stacks, since this is also used to mix other alloys. And we are also going to need more canthal for this, which is why I decided to make extra last episode. It's still in the hot form though, which means we need to cool it down in the chemical bath. And one of the cool things I just recently learned actually is that you can make up one of these heat vents from IC2, place it on a tank, and then all of the hot coolant byproduct that you get from cooling down ingots, we can actually take that and put it inside the tank. And then you can put water next to the vent cover. And this will actually cool it and convert it back into regular IC2 coolant, which we can use to cool down the canthal. That's really awesome. The only other way to do that is with the vacuum freezer, which, I mean, I guess we could technically craft at this point. But our material list and crafting list is already long enough here. <laughs> Let's get started. Let's do this. That was almost nine straight days of just crafting. <laughs> that took an extremely long time and I don't even think we've got all the materials here. We're missing like eight gas turbines. It's only so that we can power all this stuff, not really that important, right? But yeah, apart from the fact that we have no more LV or MV circuits, no more aluminium, no more tin, no more rubber, no more bronze, no more nothing. Let's just give this a shot and see how it goes. So first of all, we want to make sure the schematic is placed correctly. It's 16 by 16 and we're trying to place it in a 17 by 17. So there's going to be two sides which have nothing in them, which is fine. We can fill the space. 
And truthfully, now that I'm looking at this, I might actually extend the path out a bit more to give us more space down there. It feels a bit cramped in here, don't you think? Especially with all the machines in it, and this is only layer one. And if we start messing with the paths here, that's gonna kind of get a bit close to this main path, which means we have to move the whole schematic. And then we're kind of out of the whole chunk, which is the whole point of this actually, is to keep it all within one chunk boundary. So does that mean we move it back a chunk? I'm kind of thinking out loud here. <laughs> we could move it into this chunk here. And that means there would be a bit more space here at the entrance. Hmm. This is a really tough decision, actually. Yeah, I think I made the right decision here. I moved it back a full chunk, and I actually also went to move the miner on a separate tin vein, which should give us the resources we need to craft the rest of these turbines. So I think the best way to approach this would be layer by layer. There is a layer toggle here in the schematics mod. And we'll start here with a bunch of redstone alloy cable. This is different to red alloy cable. This is actually the lossless cable at LV. No matter how far we take this, we don't lose any power through the cable. If I can <laughs> if I can actually place it correctly. And then on the end here, we have two compressors. And he's actually left us a little sign in the front here. Compressors should have input filter enabled. Shift right click with a screwdriver will enable input filler. Especially useful on things like alloy smelters. The input filter though basically just locks it to a specific recipe. Yeah, then we have the turbine to power the cable. And the reason the cable is so long is just because, as I mentioned, this will eventually become tier 3. The third one, and you can see all the machines on the line. And then all of this black cable, I, it took me a while to realise what this was, but I think it's actually potent fluid pipe. And it's just been dyed, to signify that there's benzene that's supposed to go through here. Since benzene is a black fluid. At least I think it's ben- it can't be wood tar, right? We are going to be making wood tar from this, but no, it can't be wood tar. I think this is benzene. Yeah, these are gas turbines, which do burn benzene. So I'm assuming this is going to connect right here. Alright, that should be all of the fluid pipes connected. There's a few more on top there, but we'll save those for later. So let's take it back down to the first layer. This little part here is actually not entirely necessary. We are definitely going to add it in, but we'll do that at the end. Let's go up to layer 2 and see what's here. Oh yeah, the item conduits. One of my favourite items in all of modded Minecraft, but not something we've made yet. We'll come back to that, let's go to layer 3. Okay, here we have more turbines, which we don't actually have. 8x redstone alloy cable, more power cable. And two centrifuges. This corner right here with the compressors and centrifuges, this is the main part which makes benzene. Oops, that's a wrench. Okay, we go up a few more layers, and this is where we get to the pyrolyze oven. The pyrolyze oven, you can think of as basically just a really advanced version of the coke oven. And this is also where we need our cancel coils. As you can see on the tooltip for the pyrolyze oven, the coils affect the process and speed. So at Cooper Nickel we get 50% speed, or basically it's cut in half. It's only when we get up to Canthal that we start getting 100% speeds, which is basically the ones that we see listed in NEI. And then anything above that is basically overclocked. But if we didn't go with Canthal, it would severely cut out the amount of energy profit that we would make out of this whole module. So it basically doesn't even become worth it unless we use Canthal. So we've got the maintenance hatch, we've got output hatch for wood tar, we have output bus for charcoal. One more layer looks like it's just casing. And then to cap it off we've got the muffler hatch, the input hatch and the input bus. And unfortunately for these pyrolyze ovens the inputs have to be on top and the outputs have to be on the bottom. Apparently I also didn't make enough potent pipe, let's make sure we correct that. And I haven't been to collect a miner yet, but I did manage to find some tin inside or in dust form in the chests. And I smelted that up, made some more electronic circuits, and we should be able to make at least four gas turbines. I think we're still missing like another four, at least. And then there's also the item conduits, so I was making up some pulsating iron, redstone alloy, ender pearl dust, and iron, another use for the ender pearls here. I think I also made up some conductive iron. And this should actually be a quest in MV. Right? Ayo, Ayo, it's off the end. <laughs> Ayo, Ayo, it's off the Ender Ayo we go. I like that. Yes, it's Ender Ayo time. So we need to make these plates. And let me just show you the recipe for those of you who have not played GTNH before. Okay, so for one, I a single item conduit is small electron pipe. Electrum is gold and silver. A pulsating iron, which we just, just seen the recipe for. And an ingot of polyethylene. And all of that for a single item conduit, which is mega expensive. It's pretty much the reason I wanted to get that regenerating enderman. And we also have been building up polyethylene here, which is good. Definitely want to make sure we batch craft these. 
I'm not sure that... Oh, yeah, we have some more dust here we can smell in the blast furnace. Should be enough for today, at least. Oh, yeah, there it is. The first item conduits. Oh, it's been months since I've played with these. I miss them. And one of the other things that we need with this pulsating iron is actually going to be super tanks. Oh, no, we might not have enough circuits. It's four circuits each. How many circuits do we actually have? Twelve? Okay, that's definitely not enough, considering we also need the gas turbines. Okay, at least at this point, we have unlocked a cheaper recipe for the LV circuits. Let's buy some more vacuum tubes. And yeah, it's only going to be resistors, red alloy wire, circuit boards, and vacuum tubes. This, sh this should give us a bunch more LVs. All right, we got some more circuits crafted, and we have five super tanks. The first five super tanks. These things will store four million each. Oh, nice, and it gives us some extra plastic fluid pipe. Yeah, these, are, these cost a lot of polyethylene to make. However, they have been given some new treatment in the new versions of GTNH, and they can now automatically void fluids, which never used to be the case before, which is super awesome. So yeah, this is going to be used to store the outputs. Benzene, oxygen, and nitrogen, I think, is that tank there. That's not where I wanted that. And there's also one more down here. I'm not really sure what this one is for. I think it might be another oxygen tank. And then the final one here is for benzene, this one in black. And we do have the rest of the potent pipes here, which we can connect. There's also the shutters that we need to f figure out here, which way the fluid is going to flow. We definitely don't want things sloshing around in the pipes here. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks. And I realized I haven't actually shown the recipe yet for benzene. But it basically all comes from wood. Now, you might be thinking, well, we don't have an automated way of making wood yet. And you would be entirely correct in pointing that out. But that is the reason we needed to get to HV first. And I seem to be failing to play. <laughs> okay, so obviously it takes power to make power, right? And, well, we don't really have any benzene to burn in the gas turbines. What we do have, though, is diesel and combustion generators. Might as well take the batteries here as well. <laughs> and you know what? Also some of this cable. Hello, spider. So the pyrolyze oven starts with this recipe here. Nitrogen plus circuit 10 plus 16 logs gives us charcoal and wood tar. It's an MV recipe, so we have double LV energy hatches. I don't know what I just threw away there. And just for now, we're going to use this battery buffer. Oh, wait a second. This is LV. LV energy input hatches. I'm glad I said that out loud. <laughs> that could have been an explosion. Uh, yeah. Let's not do that. I think if I wasn't recording there, we would have had an explosion on our hands. Okay, no explosions. I did hook up an LV4X lithium battery buffer. The only thing we have to give this now is nitrogen and logs. The nitrogen is where these compressors and centrifuges come in here. So we have another combustion generator just for now. We should be able to give this some diesel. I think there's some extra in these. And so to get nitrogen, all we have to do is actually compress empty cells just as is. Oh, I should have brought mufflers for this. So much running back and forward here, which is why I wanted to get concrete on the floor. This is gonna, this has saved us so much time already. Okay, so when you compress empty cells, you get compressed air. Centrifuge and compressed air gives us oxygen and nitrogen. And it gives us it in the item form, so all we have to do is come into the conduits here. Oh, nice, they added the, they updated the UI as well. This is like the 1.12 UI. It used to be that you had to like click a button to get to the extract page. Now it's like 1.12, which is awesome. I am a huge fan of this. And if you guys have watched the channel a long time, then you know my conduit colors are always extract on brown if it's staying within a closed loop. And then insert on blue if it's going in, into item storage. And we're going to continue to follow that here. You can actually do whatever conduit color you wish. I just like to keep it consistent. So yeah, insert brown on the centrifuge. All right, this also needs power. Uh, maybe we can steal a little battery from here and actually just power the machine <laughs> directly. Until we get a tiny little bit of benzene. This is what we have to do. And this is an extremely slow recipe, 80 seconds. Once we get that, the nitrogen will go to this tank in the middle. But yeah, we want to point the centrifuge up into the pipe and use fluid auto output, which will output the nitrogen. And then the leftover empty cells and oxygen. Well, the oxygen is going to be extract on blue. And then we want to insert on blue on the compressor with priority of one. And because we hit it with the screwdriver, we have the input filter. It's only ever going to allow empty cells in here. And the oxygen should be sent to the super tank up here, which we also want insert on blue and extract on blue, actually. So that will put the full cell of oxygen inside the super tank, drop its contents off, and then put the empty cell back in the compressor to be compressed. OK, so now we have nitrogen in this middle tank, which we need to send into the pyrolyze oven. We should be able to do that with an electric pump. 
either on the tank or on the pipe. I think we'll put it on the tank. And we definitely want to shutter this pipe. And that's going to go into the input hatch of the coke oven. Awesome. Now all we need to do is give this logs, and I think it's circuit 10. We can do that inside the input bus. I believe there's going to be maintenance required. Yeah, screws are loose, which is a screwdriver. Everything should be running fine. Hit it with the soft mallet. This is the moment of truth. Oh, green lights. That is a good sign. <laughs> and in 16 seconds, we should have wood tar and ashes, I think. Right? Oh no, we get charcoal. That's right. Charcoal and we should have got a fluid, which it looks like it's already been sent on this pipe. And that goes all the way into over here, which doesn't have the distillery placed yet. Wait a second, did we do the right recipe? I don't see the fluid anywhere. Oh no, it's here. It's here. You see that on the tooltip? It is actually here. It's because we don't have the pipe shutters on. It has to flow this direction. And that is all going to go into an MV distillery. That's not a distillery. <laughs> That's a gas turbine. MV distillery. And the distillery will give us a whole bunch of different outputs, one of those being benzene on circuit 3. And we do have to give this thing power as well. I'm not quite sure why there's pipes on top when we could just, just use automatic output. Maybe that's part of the other schematic. Yeah, and to power this distillery, we have another MV gas turbine here. Which, again, doesn't have benzene, so I think we need a battery for this, just temporarily. Alright, so after building this thing, uh, I, there's a couple of other things which we must get to today. I don't think we're going to get our tree farm though, unfortunately, because that's still quite a ways off actually. One of the things we must make sure we add today is an item detector cover. And we'll also need a machine controller. This thing, how expensive is this? Iron plate and a lever? Okay, we can do that. I've got some serious cleaning up to do after this episode. Especially the outputs of all the machines. I mean, they are just full of, of garbage. <laughs> I mean, it's not garbage, it's stuff that we actually use, but... Uh, it needs sorted and put away, basically. I'm also just realizing how well designed this thing actually is. It's not the most aesthetic thing you've ever seen, but when we're in the early game here of GTNH and everything is just so expensive, the looks aren't exactly the first consideration you have to make when designing things like this. Anyways, I also have a question to you guys. Drawers. There's going to be a lot of drawers in the future throughout the base, at least until we get applied energistics. And there's a few options actually that we have for these. Feel free to make any other suggestions in the comments, but these are the three that I've picked out. Maybe you guys can comment one, two, or three. Which one is the best? I'm kind of leaning towards the one with blue. Has a bit more color, a bit more character. So I think maybe for today we use these. Yeah, and the drawers we'll use for all of the item storage on site. So as you guys know, most of the multi-blocks in GTNH or GregTech specifically will void the outputs if their output bus is full. And we don't want to void items here, right? So there's a couple of ways that we could prevent that. The easiest way is with the item detector cover. Let's actually remove the drawer here so we can see what we're doing. So yeah, this is the output bus. This is the output hatch. The output bus, we want to put an item detector cover on the left-hand side. And this has to be pointing into the Pyrolyze Oven machine controller. And the item detector cover allows us to output redstone based on the contents of the bus. So we want to detect all slots. And we want to set the item threshold to, I don't know, 32. We do get 20 per recipe, which is good. That means it can run the recipe and instantly start the next, even if there is still the first recipe outputs in the bus. And then we can use the machine controller on the Pyrolyze oven. We want this on safe mode. Safe mode basically disable completely disables the multi-block if it ever runs out of power. Because the machine controller basically acts like the soft mallet. And if you soft mallet a machine while it doesn't have power and you have the items in the input bus, then it will void the inputs and not give you anything. So safe mode will prevent that. Otherwise, if it does have power and it does have inputs and the output bus is full, then we want this to disable with redstone. So now the machine is basically armed, right? It's ready to go, waiting for inputs. Just as a demonstration, we can add another item detector cover on the front and we'll set this to the same settings, 32 and inverted with a lamp. So lamp is on, that means machine should turn on because there's nothing in the output bus. Let's give it some wood, give it some logs to get started. It does have nitrogen and it should start to turn on here. Oh, no, 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 hold on a second. We have this backwards. We don't want the item detector cover inverted. 
yeah, lamp off, machine on. It will disable itself with the redstone signal. So yeah, now the machine is running, it's going to output its charcoal. So yeah, the charcoal is then placed in the fluid extractors. Whenever you fluid extract charcoal, you get wood tar. And remember, wood tar is also what we get out of the pyrolyze oven, which joins this, this pipe right here. We have fluid automatic output on the machines. And that joins this pipe and goes to the distillery to make us benzene. And then I figured out the super tank here, this automatically outputs down. And then it goes into the advanced gas turbine to power it. And then also joins this other uh, fluid pipe. Which is basically the fuel pipe for the whole system. This connects to every single gas turbine. Feeds them all benzene and powers all the machines. And then any excess out of the super tank is what we get as profit. So it has to fill all these buffers here. It's quite a big buffer. It's going to take a while. Fluid extracting charcoal also gives us ashes a 10% chance. The ashes are first of all buffered in this drawer and then taken out on this item conduit. And those are round robin into the centrifuges. When you centrifuge ashes, you get a bunch of uh, garbage here. <laughs> it's basically, I mean, it's mostly garbage, uh, but some of it could be useful. We are going to process it since we can. Some of you might say it's not worth it, but uh, I mean, we're getting this going early. So I'm willing to bet we're going to profit quite a bit off of this in uh, the next couple hundred hours. And I believe it's 36 at a time. Now that we have the machine controller on there, we should actually be able to just put a conveyor on this on this drawer. This is going to be the log input. This is what we're going to attach the farm output to. The only other thing is maintenance for this, which we'll have to keep an eye on. Yeah, we're almost there though. There we go. Okay, we're centrifuging ashes 300 seconds, so it's, it's mighty slow. But we are doing this at LV, so we have the most fuel efficiency out of the gas turbine. And one of the things that I wanted to point out here, it's actually on the schematic already, but what this stack size refers to is actually when you screwdriver these medium voltage item filters, it looks like we need to go to 35. This pretty much determines how much minimum this filter is allowed to output. And this one here is stack size 6. And we want to flip it around to insert into the electrolyzer. Okay, how close are we here? 200 se 100 seconds to go. But yeah, this this stack size is actually very important. You'll notice here, for example, quick climb, we get 18 at a time out of the centrifuge, a 64% chance. But in order to electrolyze it, we have to do it 2 at a time. We don't want any excess to get stuck in the machine. And the electrolyzer only has two slots on the inputs, right? And we can't use the input filler since we're doing multiple recipes. So to ensure a, a correct amount goes inside the electrolyzer, we use the filler to set the minimum amount that it's allowed to send to the machine. I hope that makes sense. Things like phosphorus pentoxide, we get two at a time. And this electrolyzes seven at a time. So if let's say we're left with eight of this, we don't want all eight to be in the electrolyzer and block the slot. We want it to only send seven at a time. Okay, we're almost there. One second left. What do we get? Okay, a decent amount of stuff here. We didn't get everything, which means we can't set the filters yet. But yeah, banded iron and phosphorus pentoxide we want in this filter. And I think it will automatically output. We don't want it to emit energy. We also don't want it to emit redstone. So as long as there's 35 in there, it will automatically output. And then the other four we want in this filter here. And then when we electrolyze, we also get oxygen. Oxygen is going to be automatically output to the super tank next to it, which is just one more buffer. We are going to overflow void. And the rest of the items we're going to take out on the conduits, ex extract on blue. And this is going to be our profit, basically. What we get out of this, which is going to be calcium and a bunch of other stuff. I do hope that made sense, at least. But yeah, I think that's all we need to do for this system. Again, we don't need the pollution scrubber, since we have pollution disabled. All that's left to do now is actually just expand this and also set up the wood farm. Oh yeah, and I guess enable automatic voiding for oxygen. Ideally, we don't void anything, but I would rather this kept going than back up on oxygen. And I think we're also done with the schematic for now. And of course, we want to set output from the centrifuges into the filters here. I almost forgot about that step. We'll do this on red channel. We should also be able to just rely on benzene and remove the combustion generators by now. But that is something I'm going to mess with uh, between episodes here. I think this is a good wrapping up point for today. <laughs> I appreciate it once again if you made it all the way to the end. I did not intend to ma make it this long. But you know, sometimes we have to uh, dive a little deeper here in Greg Tech. It's a lot of fun. I have got some serious cleaning up to do here. We have the output of the miner, which has to be placed again. This will probably be the last episode for a couple of days, so I want to wish you guys a happy holidays. Massive thank you for all of your support this year. It's been amazing. Anyways, that is going to wrap us up for today once again. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.